Hello everyone and welcome back to our inventory series. In this episode we're going to go through the process of how to drag and drop items from your inventory out into the world and more so how to spawn a loot bag so rather than dropping individual items you can drop a whole bunch in one single container that is a temporary container that you can then loot from later on. So let's take a look at how this works. So we're back in our inventory system and we want to add the ability to drag and drop items from our inventory. So we want to pick them up. I can just go here and drag them out rather than just right clicking and doing drop one, drop all. So let's go through how this works. This is very simply done because we've already got the drop functionality in our code. All we need to do is go to a drag and drop operation and on the functions, go to override, do drag cancelled. This function gets called whenever you drop or let go of the button to drop an item on something that does not have a drop event. So if you drop it on another bit of UI or in the world, for example, it's going to call drag cancelled. So all we need to do in here is drag our inventory component and do remove from inventory. And the index is just our index. Now, if you want to remove the whole stack, it's totally up to you. It usually makes the most sense to remove the whole stack so we can tick that box there and be like that and i hit play i can now pick up item and i can now drag it out and it will spawn outside and leave my inventory i pick up all three i can drag out all three and spawn all three out in the world like that. So it's very easy to do something like this but what we're going to do is go a little bit step, one step further. What if you wanted to combine items together? What if you wanted them, like, rather than dropping three individual apples, we drop a little container on the floor, you pick up, and you can access and open, like you would a chest. Yeah? Be exactly the same as this, except the different mesh, basically. So what we need to do is we need to create the uh, singular mesh, singular item container that we need for this to work. So for this, we need to go to a chest and we're going to right click on our chest and create a child of it. And we'll do, we'll create a loot bag. And I'll change the mesh of it. Else, have a sack or anything in here? Nope. Okay, well, let's take a look at the, uh, look at Quixel Bridge. If there's anything we can use in there. So we just need a little bag or something that we can drop in. And just search for sack. In there. Search for bag. Yeah, something like that will do. Leather water pot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that'll do. Um, so in here, we're going to go and... Oh, I'm going to sign in. Then we'll import that into our project. Once we've got our little pop thing, we're going to bring that into our chest thing we just made. A uh, loot bag. Uh, uh, pot. Yeah. Uh, bit bigger so it stands out a bit. Okay. Pop. And go to its inventory system. So its inventory system here, um, content will be empty. Okay. We want to make this spawn in and, and generate this content as we create it. So we're just going to clear that and the rest of that we can leave alone. Oh and save. So the loot bag is going to be going spawned in when we want to remove the whole stack. Okay so when we're removing the whole stack we are spawning in uh where is it? Move whole stack uh I... yeah this bit. Um we're dropping all the items, okay? We're dropping every item like this, every item, drop item. Rather than dropping each, every item for the for loop, we're going to spawn in just the one loop bag, and then we're going to add items to it. So we know what item we have, we know what quantity we want to spawn in. So what we can do is we're going to change this to be not a loop. Just go straight across. And instead of spawning the item class, we want to spawn in the um, loot bag. So you know, change the class here to loot. 
bag. Like so. And we'll get the drop location now. Now we only want to spawn the loot bag if we are spawning more than one of these items. So if the quantity here is greater than one, we're doing this. If it's less, if it's one, then we, only, we still want to spawn in the normal item class. So quantity, let's just get rid of this. Here. We're going to do quantity is greater than one. And put that in there. And then otherwise, on false, it's going to spawn in just the item itself. So if we drop one apple, it just drop one apple while the whole loot bag item class goes to there. Okay, so when we spawn the loot bag, we get this return value. And the return value then means we can access its like inventory component and many other things. Let's go to its inventory component. So I go return value, inventory component. And our system, sorry, inventory system is called. Yep. And in here, I can now set the content. So I'm going to go add item, add to inventory. There we go. And the item and quantity we want to add here is going to be this item ID and quantity. So we're going to drag that across. That across. You may want to put some reroute nodes in there to make it easier to read. See what's going on. Ah. Yeah, and it will just add the items to that inventory. So compile and save that. So let's go check that in action. If I go back to my game and pick up one item and drop it, it should drop the apple. So now if I pick up multiple, it should drop the bag. Yeah. And if I go interact with the bag, oh, it doesn't have a collision on it. I need to add a collision. Um, let's go to the loot bag. Mesh, and it probably doesn't have a collision on it, so I just need to add a collision. Move that. Yeah, no collision on it at all. And add a simple sphere collision to it, like that. Right, let's do that again. That up. Drop the bag. Now I can interact with the bag and get my three apples from it. Okay. But if the pot is empty, we don't want it to remain there as a container. We want it to be destroyed when it's emptied. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add something to our inventory system. So the thing we need to have on here is make it so that when the inventory updated gets called, which is being called by the drop item, when we remove item, it's updating everyone. We need to update the loot bag and tell it to destroy itself. So on the loot bag, we're going to go over here and we're going to click on our inventory system. And on the right hand side, you'll see events and you see inventory updated as a little green button you can click. Push that and it should be the binding for that event. So now when that happens, we want to check how much we have in our inventory. Um, I can't remember. Do we have a way to see how much we've got? Mm, no, that's fine. Uh, we can actually make a little function for that. That might make me really nice. Um, get um, uh, quantity. And what we're going to do in there is basically cycle through all of our content. So for each slot, we're going to break open this. I thought I'd just split it open. Get the quantity. And we're going to add it to a rolling number on the local variable. So local sum int. Drag that out. We just add that to quantity here. Starts at zero and increases as it goes through the for loop. When it's completed here, I'm going to do a return node and do local sum and output that and do total. Now, because it's a getter um, and I want to make sure it's the most accurate data possible, we're going to tick the pure tick box. This will make it a pure function. So on my loop bag now, I can get my 
inventory system, get quantity. This returns how much I have in that in that um, inventory. So on here, we're just going to check if this is less than or equal to zero. It shouldn't ever be less than, but you never know. Cover your bases. And there's a branch. And if it's true, we'll do destroy actor. Okay. Like that. So now, pause. Drag it out. And there is our loot bag. And we can now just drag from this and add them to our inventory. Or we can even add more stuff to it if you wanted to. And keep it like a little bit of storage. Um, but that's if you want to do it this way. You may not want to do it this way. You may want to do it with a, um, uh, uh, just the individual items on the floor, whatever it may be. Um, it also makes sense to close the UI automatically as well when we are doing that. So the chest parent class, um, when we interact with it, we're doing show container for the inventory system. We need to need to hide the container again. So on the loot bag, before we destroy the actor, we needed to do inventory system again and do, um, I literally forgot what I called it, show, no, what I call it, literally just saw it, uh, uh, chest, where is it? Show container, that's what I want. Oh, the HUD, it's from the HUD, sorry. Um, we'll just get the player controller, be that. So we're getting the player controller, which is cast to the player controller class, getting the HUD reference, and then we're going to hide the um, thing. We'll go show container and probably if we leave it blank. Hide it. Let me double check that. I'll open up that show container, see the code I've done for it. Uh, create. Da -da -da -da. Got that. Uh, we want to. Hey. Oh, didn't do a thing on it. Okay, uh, we'll just do rather than show container, new bag, we'll just do menu and we'll just do remove from parent. things when I haven't touched the product for a while I forget how I made it there we go compile save that so the loop bag is going to check the quantity it's less than or equal to zero it's going to get the player controller and tell the menu to hide or remove the menu from the screen and then destroy the actor so it should all be automatic so pick up pick up pick up drag that out there's our little loop bag Drag that out and add it to our inventory. Yeah. Perfect. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've learned a bit of how to do that and uh, enjoyed seeing how that works. If you want to see more from the inventory series, please leave a comment below about what you'd like to see feature-wise added to it. In the next part, we're going to go through how to save and load an inventory. So check out that out right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my subscribers and YouTube members for the continued support, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone. Yeah.